Like, I've gone up, like, six levels already. I'm, I don't really know how many more there are. But if I go up, like, two more and there aren't any, then we might just have to call it quits and do it in one of these levels where it's super vacant. Hope you're having a good day. I'm back at it again with another video for you guys. I think today I'll probably talk about the best first mods that you guys can put on your WRX or STI if you have one. First things that I think is super essential for any Subaru, especially if you want to modify it and put your parts on and not have to worry about that beautiful yellow light over there, is going to be the Cobb Access port. And I know you guys have seen this already before plenty of times. I know I've showed it in videos and you guys aren't stupid. I know you guys know what Cobb is. Keep in mind these videos are really for people that don't know too much about Subarus, that don't know really anything about how it is to work on them, how it is to really own one or anything like that. So I'm doing this for you guys. Anytime you're messing with your air ratios or anything of that sort, pretty much whenever you're putting a new part on the car, um, you're going to want to have it tuned. Now Cobb gives you a couple of off the shelf tunes or as people want to abbreviate OTS tunes and they're meant to get you to the dyno or until you get an e-tune so you can still drive your car and not have it, you know, have crazy detrimental effects on it. Now I'm not sure if you guys know this, but I am on an OTS stage two plus tune. So that's with the electronic boost controller. What that entails is a high flow cat downpipe and also a Cobb SF intake with a box on it and a bunch of other small Cobb parts, and that's pretty much it. Obviously, I don't have any of those parts in my car. I have an NVIDIA Catless downpipe. I've got a Grimspeed uh, electronic boost controller. I'm putting in a Grimspeed up pipe with an external wastegate. So, those OTS tunes aren't really gonna work for me, especially now considering Cobb has their whole Greenleaf act that they put out, which I will make a video for you guys if you want. Um, there's some things I wanna talk about with that too. So it's gonna allow you to see your gauges. It's gonna allow you to do like uh, like like performance measurements, like zero to sixty in quarter mile times. It also allows you to do troubleshooting. If you go down to the troubleshooting, you can go ahead and erase code. You can read your codes, and you can reset your ECU. It also allows for adjustments of timing, idle, and uh, launch control. And this is the area where you would actually go to change your map. So now. If I were to go and actually do that, there's a couple like little connectors and things like that that they'll send along with you. Um, but that's pretty much in a nutshell what the Cobb Access Port is. It's an easy, accessible way to go ahead and tune your car, whether it be e-tuning or pro-tune or even a dyno tune. Okay, so the next thing is something I can't really show you because I put it in the car already and it's literally sitting pretty much, it's pretty much sitting under my intercooler. But I can try to show you guys. Uh... So literally, if you guys look right there, if you see that hose with the T-fitting on it and it's got the uh, really ratchety ghetto uh, uh, zip tie on it. So that right there is what's called the Cylinder 4 Cooling Mod and it pretty much is an extra passageway OEM from Subaru that is on the back of Cylinder 4 and if you go ahead and take off the cap, I think it's like a, a T10 torque screw or something like that, you're going to want to go ahead and take that off and it allows for passage for coolant through that cylinder to cool it down to make sure it doesn't overheat. Because apparently Cylinder 4 is the one that likes to go to the moon. I will say it doesn't make much of a performance gain, it's more of a preventative maintenance mod, but it is something that will really, really be beneficial for you guys in the future. Um, I did notice that once I put that in, my dam went up from, I think it was 8 up to 12, and it, that was no reset or anything like that, it just went up naturally on its own, just because it had more coolant going through there, and it wasn't overheating as much. I feel like we're flying through these. The next thing will be the air oil separator. I know IAG makes a street series, they also make a pro series, and also as you saw, Perrin makes a street series for my car. Pretty much what that AOS is gonna do is it's gonna act a lot like a catch can with the only difference being you don't have to dump it out every time it gets full. It actually recirculates that used oil back into your, uh, into your pickup tube and you reuse the oil again so that it doesn't go into the intake manifold, get sucked into your intercooler, and then you have a lot of blow-by, and that's how you blow a piston ring or something something crazy like that that we don't want. I 100% definitely recommend getting the air oil separator. It is a really, really good preventative maintenance mod, and uh, it does help with a lot of issues like uh, ring land failure, getting blow-by with pistons, and, and things like that. So, 10 out of 10 recommend getting an AOS. These last two are a lot more like feel-good mods. I also just want you guys to remember that this video is subject to your opinion. These modifications that I'm telling you guys about are things that I think personally you should put on first before you do anything else. With that being said, that is my opinion. 
other people are gonna have different opinions there are tons of other videos showing different things so if you guys have any other input that you want feel free to go ahead and leave it down in the comments below I want to talk about is the static boys coilovers all right well you can't really see them now but I will leave a link to the video that I made putting my coilovers in so for those of you guys who are probably newer subscribers or don't really remember I have the Raceland Primo adjustable coilovers in so those are the I think $700 option with the adjustable dampening in the front and the rear and adjustable camber in the front. And that's not to say that you can't get a good set of coilovers for a cheap price. I just know that for what I want in the car, I'm going to have to spend a little bit more. Some things it's okay to cheap out on, other things like suspension and also really go fast parts, you don't want to really cheap out on those. You want to make sure you get the best quality that you can. Or at least if you are going to cheap out on it, go the extra mile and get a rebuild for whatever it is that you're getting. They have rebuild kits for pretty much everything. Yes, including suspension. This is literally my favorite one right here, okay? That last mod is definitely gonna be the exhaust. And I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna agree with me on that. It changes the sound of the car and makes it sound more aggressive depending on what you put on. And it also adds a little bit of horsepower as well. Right now, I have the Turbo XS Catback. And like I mentioned earlier, that's coupled along with the NVIDIA Divorce Catless Downpipe. Don't get me wrong, it sounds really, really good together. And I've heard from a lot of people like Cam, Pedro, that it does sound like a Subaru. It's got the cool rumble. It's just not as loud as I want it to be, so I think I'm gonna go with the NVIDIA route because it's more of a Canon style exhaust. You could definitely get away without doing the exhaust, but at some point or another, you and I both know that you are gonna put a three inch or four inch exhaust on that sports car and it's gonna be amazing and you're never ever gonna go back. It makes your car go from sounding like this super in love with it so I assumed like I knew everything about it just because I knew what the name of the motor was but realistically speaking as soon as I got the car it was like a slap in the face because I had no prior mechanical experience and I also didn't really have all the knowledge that I needed on just general cars so I want to make videos to like kind of relate to you guys and show you what I've learned in the past two years and also what I'm going to continue to keep learning you're going to see a lot of different types of videos whether it's a top five or like a tutorial or even maybe just a regular day-to-day -day vlog cars and coffee something of that sort i appreciate you guys and i hope you guys appreciated the video and let me know what i'm what i might have missed let me know some things that you guys might think are important or let me know like some mods that you think that you would do first rather than the ones that i already told you let's see if we can get ourselves to a thousand subscribers by hopefully like july or august i think it's possible if i just make it more consistent videos and i try to pump more stuff out for you guys so Love you all, and can I get a hi? That was a good echo. I thought somebody was going to say it back, but I guess not. <laughs> I feel weird now. Peace out, guys.